I have a few announcements today. The video production of the worship service this morning has been possible through a financial donation from Carol and Crystal Smith. They are members of the Lake Wilson United Methodist Church. Thank you, Smiths, for supporting this ministry of the churches. The Slayton Ad Council will meet Wednesday, June 16th at 7 p.m. The Lake Wilson United Methodist Church will be serving breakfast at the Town and Country Days. We're going to be doing this from 9 to 10 on Saturday, June 19th. So we encourage everyone to come there. It's in the um, Legion building for delicious food and great conversation. The Minnesota Annual Conference is being held June 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And um, most of it is going to be virtually, all of it on Tuesday and all of it on Thursday. But on Wednesday, there's an opportunity for anyone to attend. It's at the Worthington United Methodist Church. I would love to take a car load. So if you are interested, please call the church office. Looking ahead to our next holiday, July 4th, there is going to be one church service that day for the two congregations that I serve. We've decided to do one service at 9 a.m. on the lawn outside of the Slayton United Methodist Church. So we would love um, for anyone and everyone to attend that day prior to their holiday events. We continue to be blessed with contributions to our church's ministries. They continue to be important in the functioning and the um, just making our two churches run. There will be some uh, addresses on the um, screen. And if you are so inclined to send a donation, we would really appreciate it. Now, we know that there are several of you who tune in each week to watch our services, but we don't know who you guys are. So I encourage you to please let us know who you are. You can email us at our church email. You can call the church office and leave a message or simply leave a message um, that you can leave via the YouTube capability. We look forward to hearing from you. Our scripture for today. I have chosen John 1, 1 through 9. Now, I read a, a small portion of that um, before. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. My second text is also from John. It's the 8th chapter, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. After a week off, I was very happy to return to the I Am statements. Jesus claimed today to be the light of the world. 
is one of the claims in the scriptures that concerns his deity. In various scriptures, he talks about being the light. In John 8, verse 12, which I just read, some background as to why he used the word light in his scripture to make his claims of deity was that the Feast of the Tabernacles in the temple court was going on, and there were great golden lamps that were used to light the area during the feast. Well, as he spoke these words, he was standing in the treasury area and was relating to the natural light. He was, he was addressing the natural light to the spiritual light, that inexhaustible source of the true light that he gives. Now, even though those lamps that I talked about were shining brightly each day, his light shone more brightly in the world of darkness. Now, upon immediately upon saying this and making this claim, the Pharisees who were there said, you're talking about yourself here, and this is not true. Those Pharisees, oh. The Jews recognized the term, I am. We have to remember that. It was a term for deity. That term deity speaks for self-existence and just eternal being, always having been here. And they weren't buying it. You'll remember back in the book of Exodus when Moses was to go to Pharaoh, and he asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? When they ask, who is the God of the Israelites, what should I say? And then God said to him, tell them, I am has sent you to them. So Jesus is using that term of deity that the Pharisees all understood I am the light, I am the way, I am the door. So, I have a question. Why was light one of the great claims of Jesus? And what was the purpose of the light? Well, to answer you, there's several things. But one of the main purposes for Jesus coming into the world to, was to expose sin and darkness. Now, the Pharisees did not like the light shown on them. It exposed their attitudes and their, their wrongful deeds. You know, think about this. If, if you are out in the woods and um, you find a log and you, you turn it over, what happens? Whatever bugs are under there, they scurry, right? They aren't necessarily afraid of you. Rather, it's the light that shines on them that is just repulsive to them. John 3, verses 19 and 20 says this, And this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. The Pharisees got very upset when Jesus made the claim, I am the light, and they fought him on it. In today's scripture of John 1, verses 10 and 11, which I think I stopped at nine, it says, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came to his own and his own received him not. Now, can you think of a dying person refusing a doctor or a starving person rejecting food? 
Or a drowning person rejecting and refusing a life jacket or a lifeboat. Or even a freezing person refusing a warm coat. Yet that is exactly what happened when Jesus, the light, came into a darkened world. He was rejected by many people, just as he is now. And so why, why was he rejected? Well, it's because the nature of humans is sinful. Those who live in darkness don't want their evil deeds exposed. And who is the prince of darkness? It's Satan. It's the tempter. He wants to rule the hearts of us. And he rules the hearts of unbelievers. We have to remember that light is revealing to believers and unbelievers alike. I want to tell you a story. A famous picture hangs in St. Paul's Cathedral in London, and it's titled, The Light of the World. Now, it's a picture of Jesus knocking at the door. Because this picture was hanging in a place near some very busy roads, it got very dusty and it began to lose its color. So the cathedral authorities decided to get it cleaned. When the art specialist took it out of the frame and shined a light on it, he saw some words that no one was intended to read. The artist had written many years earlier, Forgive me, Lord Jesus, that I kept you waiting at the door so long. This artist had known about Jesus, but waited a long, long time before responding to the invitation. The light had shown up these words. And in the end, the message to the thousands, to us who gazed upon the picture and know the rest of the story. It was good that these few words were brought to the light. Now, a question, is it bad for the spotlight to shine on us? Well, in one man's case, it brought him to eternal life. Any idea who I'm talking about? It was the man. It was the man hanging on the cross next to Jesus. That thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The light reveals the way to salvation. Christians don't always want the spotlight shining on them in a way that would point out their sin. They don't want that either. Scripture tells us in John 8, 12, I read, I'll read it again. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, light is always linked with li- light is always linked with life. And darkness is always linked with death. So a question. Why would we not want life and want that life more abundantly? That light refines our walk with God. Ephesians 5 verse 8 says this, For you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So another question, how does his light make a difference in your life? How does it make a difference at work and at school, at home, or anywhere you go? Through scripture, we see that Jesus came into a person's life, and his light drove out darkness and sin. Some examples were when Jesus came to that demon-possessed man That evil spirit left him. 
Jesus came into Simon Peter's life, and great changes took place over a period of time. Oh, when we face life's challenges, he gives us direction by shining light on our path. Psalm 119, verses 105 says this, and I love this verse. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my way. Jesus is saying, the person who follows me as a traveler follows the light in a dark night and, and shall not walk in darkness, but shall have that light of life. You know, if we go by his guidelines that is given to us in his holy word, and we take directions from him, we will not be led to the destruction of our life. Many people today are following false lights rather than the true light. You know, we are not only to look at the light, but we need to walk in it. A man drove his wagon rather swiftly and safely through a very dark forest. Now, afterwards, he was asked how he knew where all the trees were along that path and along the road. The, the road was very narrow. He replied that he did not know where they were. He didn't know where the trees were, but rather he added, I looked up at the opening between the treetops, and I knew that if I followed the light above, I would be safe. Well, now, isn't that an analogy for life? Church, we must do this on our spiritual journey. Look up to the light that Jesus gives. He will have direction for us in spite of all the darkness that is around us. When we follow Jesus walking in his light, we can avoid walking blindly and falling into sin. He lights that path ahead of us so that we can see how to live and what decisions to make. Now, if we're to receive the light he wants to give us, we must be willing to remove all of the things that are not good. There are things in our life that would prevent us from receiving the light. We have to admit that. And things that could cause the light that we have to go out. So again, what are those things? Well, it can be indifference. It can be laziness. It can be just plain not making Jesus Christ a priority. In Matthew 5, Jesus tells us this, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We allow the light of Jesus to be seen in our lives as we identify ourselves. We need to identify ourselves as followers of Jesus Christ, his disciple. We don't have to be obnoxious about it. We simply let our light shine. We let his light shine in our actions and in our words. So, finally, a question for 2021. Why has God chosen to reflect his light through us, through each one of you individually in this unbelieving world? Maybe it's because unbelievers are not able to bear the full gazing glory of Jesus firsthand. 
have you allowed his Holy Spirit to shine his spotlight on your life as Peter did? Are you walking in the light? And how is your witness to the world? Is it so weak that the world can't even see Christ in you? If you, like that artist, have kept Jesus waiting too long at the door, today is the day to answer his call. If you're not letting your light shine very brightly, today is the time to make a new start. Amen. Let us go into our prayer time of this morning worship service. Let us pray. Almighty Father and Son and Holy Spirit, we acknowledge the light needed in this world that we are living in. There is so much that is not right and is frightening. But within the life of the true believer who has the light of you shining in and through them, we recognize it and realize what we must do. As a group of Christians today, we pray, we pray and come to you with thankful hearts for the many blessings you have given us. We take them for granted. We don't mean to, but we become busy and unfocused and go about our lives not thanking you for the provisions we have. Our thankful hearts praise you for the homes we live in, for the food we eat, for the privileges that we have. We pray today with concerned hearts and ask for your marvelous healing for those who have had recent surgery and who are dealing with other health issues. We also lift up those who have recently suffered death of family and friends. Today we ask for your mercy on us as sinners and ask for forgiveness of our sins. We are thankful for the opportunity of today. We acknowledge that the forgiveness of our sins and the assurance that is ours came at a tremendous cost, Jesus' death on the cross. And we humbly thank you for the further assurance of life eternal promised to us by way of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God, we live for you and we praise you. And at this time, we lift up the prayer that was taught to us within your holy word, the Bible. Hear us as we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, our sending video is also our closing video for worship today. It is entitled, I Saw the Light. It's that upbeat song that many people have recorded. And today, it's kind of a country, um, country western twang song version. And it's done by Bill Anderson. So please sing along. I am going to do the benediction prior to this song, so please receive the benediction. Friends, Jesus said, 
I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So go, follow Jesus, and walk in his light. Amen.